Because what happens when 2023 or 2024 or 2025, what happens then? We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. But if something happens to the economy, if interest rates rise, you want to make sure that property is still going to be able to service itself and not affect your lifestyle. We believe every Australian deserves a right to own at the very least five investment properties. I'm Adrian Trimboli. And I'm Frank Ambezi. And welcome to the Invest in You podcast. There is a bunch of strategies out there in the world. Let's talk about Australia. Apartments, townhouses, negative gear, cash flow positive. In today's session, what we're going to be breaking down is our tantalizing trio methodology, which gives you the exact formula, the three-peat formula that we use to not only build wealth for ourselves as the test dummies, but also for every single one of our clients. Before that, I want to talk about the mindset minute, as we always do and in how we always start off. Right. The essence of strategy is choosing not what not to do. I'll do that again, Mohammed. The essence of strategy is choosing what not to do by Professor Michael Porter. Now, exactly what I just said. In Australian real estate, there is a bunch of strategies. There's almost too many strategies out there. There's, and you hear all different things. What's better to do? Who thinks that one's better? Go highly leverage, go negative gear, whatever it is. You need to be able to pick one strategy that works for you, that you know is going to give you the life that you're, you're, you're destined to have and you're wanting to have. Today, we're going to break that all down. Frank, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So we're talking about our three-tier strategy, you know, the tantalizing trio method. Now, this is going to help you purchase property that that won't affect your lifestyle, that is scalable, that will put money in your pocket, but the most importantly, little to no risk when it comes to property. Now, property is a very, very dangerous asset class to invest in. Probably the most dangerous asset class of all financial vehicles, I believe. And why I say that is because you're leveraging other people's money. Okay, you're using the bank's money to help you purchase that investment property. Now, even if it's your family home, you got to make sure that you can pay back the property or the property's paying back itself, but it's not going to affect your lifestyle. But not just that, it's, it's going to grow and give you the financial independence that you've always wanted or your desire or your dreamt of or your desires. Now, this is super important because I think this strategy here this works for any human being in australia in australia in america in any other country this strategy is being tested and proven by not just ourselves by other people as well but it's very basic very simple but the problem is a lot of people you know they get misled from different people in their maybe in their personal life it's a family or friends or or maybe it's these other you know maybe other people other companies whatever it may be now it's not rocket science but there is a lot, uh, a lot to learn about this strategy. Now we're going to talk about this, the foundation of this, the three key key areas, and to give you an understanding about you know why the strategy is why it works over and over again, and it helps you more importantly get access to more credit from the banks, and not letting you get stuck at one or two properties, and not be able to continue to build the property portfolio. Statistics do not lie. Zero point four percent of Australians. Don't own more than three investment properties. And the Excuse reason why? The old traditional way of investing. Like Adrian said, purchasing properties that are close to the CBDs, you know, purchasing those are townhouses or apartments because they can't afford the houses now. They're close to the CBDs. Thinking that the CBDs are the only places that grow in value. Purchasing negative gear properties just to lower their taxable income. You know, all these all these different types of strategies, do not, they do not work for majority of Australian investors. And we're targeting to try and help change that number from 0.4%. We're trying to That's change awesome. that number. We want to increase that number. That's awesome. our goal. Before you jump into it, Frank, people's ears might perk up when they hear the word tantalizing, right? Very specific reason why we've 
called this term and called this strategy the tantalizing trio. Obviously, the trio side of it, that's three. The word tantalizing, if it does make your ears perk up or if you think, oh, what's that mean? It actually means to torment or tease. Okay. Now, we're not tormenting or teasing anyone, right? But this strategy here literally is making a mockery out of the traditional way of investing. Okay. And that's very much why we specifically decided to use that word tantalize, even though it kind of sounds nice with the trio as well. This strategy allows individuals who own fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year to go out and purchase property after property, right? And again, exactly like you said, doesn't affect their lifestyle. Puts money in their pocket from day one, and really is the, is the is the easiest way to go from no properties to say you're three to four in this very small period of time for quality assets. So let's get into it, Frank. So. Number one of the strategy is cash flow. Cash flow positive properties. People go, oh, where can you get these cash flow positive properties? Now, we, we find these for our clients. And this is super important because why cash flow positive property? What does this mean? That means that the cash flow that is it's called cash flow positive after all your expenses, after your insurance, after your rates, after your management fees, after all the other expenses, not including, of course, if you've got repairs, but I'm calling, talking about this, your normal utilities, you know, your mm -hmm. rates, water, insurance, body corp, et cetera, or sorry, um, insurance or management fees, property management fees. After all those expenses, your interest repayments as well, after all those expenses, the property is putting a positive surplus of money in your pocket. So you're getting an extra income after all those expenses have been paid on a monthly basis or annual basis. From the, rent, from, the, from the rent is correct? From the rent, correct. So you're getting an extra income coming into your pocket. So this is not negative gearing. Imagine negative gearing is properties that are costing you money. Every single month, every single year, you have to outlay the pay for the outgoings because the rent is not covering the outgoings. Mm -hmm. So okay. cash flow positive property is giving you that extra income. Now, what does that do? Of course, it increases your savings. Helps build that extra cash flow, build, building the extra savings because you've got another, another income coming in. And that's just one property. Imagine you had multiple. You got that extra income coming in. What does that allow you to do? It gets you, uh, allows you to uh, increase your borrowing capacity. How does that happen? That happens because you got that extra income coming in. Not just that it adds to your your personal personal income. So if you're a PAYG, so you're working for someone, or if you're a business owner, that extra income is starting to add up on your balance sheet. So if you're making 75K, let's say for hypotheticals, let's say $60,000 for a year, let's say the property is putting $5,000 a year of positive cash flow in your pocket, you've just gone from 60 to 65, so your income's gone up. Now, I'm not going to talk too much on the finance situation where the debt to income ratios and all the other nitty gritty stuff, which is really, really important to know, but I'm just giving you the foundations. So it's increasing your borrowing capacity if you do this correctly helping you gain that extra borrowing capacity from the banks to help you go for the next purchase. So it gives you enough more borrow, more of a borrow, uh, more of a, a bigger surplus of, of credit so you can go again. Yeah. Importantly, it won't affect your lifestyle. The property will not affect your lifestyle. So we call this insurance. In this in this in this strategy, there's two parts of this. We call it the insurance. Now why we call this insurance because if interest rates go up, if something happens to the economy, interest rates spike and go up, and this property is already putting a positive surplus in your pocket of cash flow, if they go up 1% or maybe even 2%, the property is going to still be cash flow positive. That's By the analysis we do, we do financial planning here in the sense of, oh, sorry, future planning here because we make sure that that property, if anything happens to it, by the sorry, the, anything happens to the economy, the property is not going to affect your lifestyle. This is super important. I don't want Australians to go out there, invest in property, and just look one year ahead and say, "Oh, everything is beautiful now, like we are in 2021." Because what happens when 2023 or 2024, or 2025? What happens? And we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. But if something happens to the economy, if interest rates rise, you want to make sure that property is still going to be able to service itself and not affect your lifestyle. Gotcha. So, and again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, right? <clears throat> so meaning that property's putting $5,000 after all expenses in your pocket, right? Uh, interest rates rise by 1%. Property then puts, say, what, 
couple hundred, a thousand dollars in your pocket. You're probably looking, depending, yeah, you're probably depending on the interest rate or what you're on, say a thousand to two thousand dollars. Awesome, awesome. So essentially, it is the insurance that is tied into this part of the strategy is you don't have to sell the property. Essentially, and that's one of the last things you want to do. Not not having the funds or the properties costing you too much, and you then have to end up selling a an A grade asset, which is absolutely not what you want to do. Awesome, love it, perfect. What's the first one? So let me just talk as well. So a little bit of information. So let's say you purchased a property at a six percent yield at a three percent interest rate, principal and interest. Let's say principal and interest. That property will probably be positive cash flow by a thousand to two thousand dollars, depending on the utilities. Okay. That's that that's principal and interest. If you go interest only, it's probably going to be five to seven the pay depending on the utilities as well. So just have to think about that. If it's six percent yield, you know, if it's a three percent interest rate on a principal and interest, that positive that property is still going to be cash flow positive on a principal and interest as well. So that means again, that means so if you want a principal and interest repayments, the rent is not only covering all the expenses, it's also paying the property down. Paying the property down and putting money in your pocket. You've got leftover without, cash putting in your pocket. Without you actually. So you could purchase a property, right? Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Go on. Let's go. What's the next one? So we've got high growth assets. So capital growth. Okay. So we're not just chasing cash flow. People think you can only have one or the other. We're doing both for our clients. This is why this, this strategy is making a mockery, I guess, of the other traditional way of investing, purchasing negative gear properties close to the CBDs, you know, just chasing growth, but look, the properties aren't servicing themselves. So natural appreciation. So what is natural appreciation? It's the economy just growing in value. You know, it's called inflation. It's then it's growing because of things that are driving the economy, maybe infrastructure projects, movement of people, maybe job creation, and maybe a lot of things that are contributing to the economy. So this this growth is it's been sparked by certain things speculation as well as one of them so we need growth we need capital growth in our portfolio this is what you call real wealth if you do not have equity if you do not have growth in your portfolio you're not going to be a successful property investor this is what this is how you make real wealth and what i mean by this is because the property will produce equity so let's say hypothetically you purchase something at $100,000 Let's say the property has grown in value, you know, over say 10, let's say after 10 years, the property has doubled or seven years. They say every seven to 10 years, property doubles, hypothetically. Let's say it doubles to $100,000 in seven years. You've got $100,000 of equity that the property has just grown. You just put your deposit down of the property, but it's grown. So you've got, you got that $100,000. You can use that now to your own, for, for your own personal situation now you can use that to buy a car you can use that to fund you know schooling or you can use that to buy more property and that's how you make your real wealth and why is that because they're called this is called you know access to credit or line, a line of credit so you're releasing that equity and you're using it to you're using it to your advantage now the beauty of this is it's tax advantage so you get to it's tax effective i should say it's tax effective in the sense that if you release a hundred thousand dollars of equity and let's say that hundred thousand dollars of equity you've taken out of one of your properties and you use it as a deposit as a, for another investment property and you're paid for stamp duty, you had to pay maybe for LMI, your legal fees and all the other fees that go with it, you actually can claim that all on tax. So stamp duty, you normally you cannot claim stamp duty, but because you've used your equity to pay for the stamp duty, you can, you, you can claim that as a tax deduction. So things like this, you know, small little things all accumulate. And using other people's money, not your own money, to always put down as a deposit, this is when real wealth starts to happen for you. It becomes a domino effect. And what will happen as well is when the property is growing in value, and let's say you have a few properties and they're all growing in value and you've purchased them for a great, you know, but you've purchased them at the right price and now they've maybe doubled in seven years or less. What happens then as well is your LVR will start to change, which is your loan to value ratio. So because why? Because the property is growing in value and when it's growing in value, your, your LVR will start to change. Not just that, you get access to more credit because now you start to release the equity and you can use it as another deposit. Amazing. Amazing. Perfect. So you've got, right, so you've got 
highly cash flow positive property, which is putting money in your pocket every year and, and increasing your actual borrowing capacity or, or giving the, the banks a look at. So, yep, this property is putting 5%K in his pocket. We'll give them the same amount of credit. You're then purchasing properties which are in those growth corridors, so whether it's regional, whether it's capital city, wherever it is, they've got the works in place which is going to grow that particular economy, that particular market, and the property's growing year after year. Allowing you to tap into that equity, allowing that that loan to value ratio to continue to drop. What's this third one? So the third one is, I guess, we call this this is our second insurance policy that I like to call it. This is value add, add value to the property or to the gotcha. portfolio. So instead of waiting for natural appreciation for your property to grow in value from the natural appreciation from the economy, from things starting to stimulate the economy, you know, from speculation, of course, or from driving economics for, you know, infrastructure projects or driving economies. So different, different industries driving it. So if it's, you know, uh, retail, healthcare, mining, whatever it may be, instead of those things or movement of people, people moving there and they're and affecting their prices, instead of waiting for that naturally to happen, you can do this call, you can do this by called for by forced appreciation by adding value to the property right away manufacturing the you know the value of the property manufacturing equity right away now some people don't like to you know be an active investor this is called active investing so you can have the passive uh, passive investing approach which is just a buy and hold and let the property do its work and i guess do value to the property down the track or you can do more of an active investor strategy where you can buy and do some cosmetic renovations, or you can do a large renovation to manufacture that equity right away. Now, I look at it like this. If I put $20,000 into a property for a renovation, but I get out $80,000, how many times would you do that? Every single bloody time. Now, I'm not saying you, don't, you're, you have to put in $20,000, but there's times, you know, People don't want to put money into the property portfolio. And I think this is, it's really important because if you do the right calculations and by doing this at our at Fresh Start Advisor, we're making sure that we're not overcapitalizing, we're not overspending on the property, making sure we're doing the right due diligence by asking property managers, real estate agents, valuers in the property in the property market. So we know we're not going to overspend on the property. So we can make sure we do a calculation of doing a renovation to the property so we can increase the equity and then extract that equity. So what does this do? It backs you up. It's an insurance policy. Why? Because let's say if something happens to the market and you've got a property there, it's a little bit rugged, you could do it for a little bit of renovation. Let's say something happens. Maybe the interest rates have gone up. Maybe, you know, something has shifted in the market. Maybe, you know, you've held the property for 10 years. Rents have started to change and they start to decline or your property is starting to decline in rent and you can't keep increasing it because of the quality of the property. What do you do? You renovate the property, you paint it, maybe change the flooring, put some new appliances, maybe do some landscaping, maybe put a patio, whatever it may be. You do that, not just that it increases the equity, it increases your cash flow, increases your income. So your rent will start to go back up. Now, with this value add potential, what we do, we focus on cosmetic renovations. So it can be a, a small, a medium, or a large renovation. So you can do small things like painting and flooring, appliances, or you can do a little bit of a medium thing. Maybe you do maybe you do one of the bathrooms up, or maybe then you want to do something large, you do a bathroom, kitchen renovation, some flooring, and whatever it may be, it might cost a little bit more. But you do the right calculations, you make sure you, you capitalize on that. We've got things like what we target for our clients is subdivision. So if they want to subdivide the property down the track or they've purchased something on a 1,200 square meter block where we can subdivide it because it's got side access and we can put another dwelling at the back down the track, that gives us the opportunity. Or maybe we want to sell the back of the property off. We've got that opportunity. If you want to develop on the property down the track, so we're making sure it's in the right zone, making sure that we can do something to the property down the track, it's, it's got a large block. And the idea is to buy, hold it maybe for five to 10 years and then say, you know what, we're going to knock this down. We're going to put some townhouses or apartments or duplexes or whatever it may be, depending on the personal situation. It gives you the opportunity not just to think short term, you're thinking long term. Adding a granny flat. There's going to be a point where we all might hit a ceiling. Maybe we hit the ceiling of maximum maximum borrowing capacity. You don't get stuck. You can keep going. You go down a low dock route. But let's just say you got some extra cash there, and you want to put a granny flat on the property. 
you got the room, you got the site access, you're allowed to do your check with the council and we've made sure we've done the due diligence for our clients. But if you're going to do this yourself, you can do it yourself. You go out there and you say, you know what, I'm going to put a dwelling at the back, a little granny flat, a little like one bedroom studio apartment. And you do that, why? Because maybe it might cost, those granny flats can cost anywhere from $100,000 to $150,000. You do that, maybe you can get an extra two to two fifty a week. So your cash on cash return is actually quite high for the money you've outlaid. And that's helping you add an extra income to your property. So these are active approaches, doing something to the portfolio to increase the equity, increase the income, and not just that it gives you, I guess, your future planning down the track. Because you might buy a property today. It might be your first or second property. And you might have no desire to subdivide or do a subdivision or do a development right now. But what happens in five years, what happens in 10 years, or maybe 15 or 20 years when you've developed as a person, you're grown as a person, and maybe you might change your mind and say, you know what, I might want to do these things because I'm sick of the boring maybe buy and hold. Now I want to actually maybe do some sort of development. And I've built a probably a very large portfolio. Maybe you've got three, four, five, six, whatever it may be, maybe more. And you might turn those pop- one property into a development and do one by one. Okay. One by one. So it's just thinking long term. We don't think short term as well. So this is something that I call insurance for cash flow and for our valuators because you can, you're always, it's always going to, I guess, you've always got ways to manufacture the equity or the cash flow. And not to say your cash flow, positive properties, not going to affect your lifestyle. Super important. So if I could just, again, play devil's advocate here, right? Does that mean with this last part of the strategy, the third tier of the strategy here, is you're not going out there and looking for the hottest property in the street. You're actually going out there looking for something that's maybe needs a bit of work where you know that if you throw money into it, it is going to actually increase both from the equity and the cash flow side. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah this is, yes, correct. So everyone, I guess everyone's personal situation is different. We do have a lot of clients that want to use this approach that love this approach and we've got some clients as well that don't want to be that active investor and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that at all because you can do that down the track we still target these areas of you know making sure it's got a great land size and it's got the value add and then of course you can do something down the track if you want to do a subdivision or at a granny flat etc but doing this using this approach in its full effect you want to use the ugly duckling syndrome which we like to use we like to call it so you don't want to purchase the nicest house in the street. It's in a good quality street. There's a lot of owner occupiers in that street. It's in a very good location. It's got good prospects around it. Now, you've purchased this property in this street and there's beautiful houses. There's probably 10 times better houses in your street in this street. But those houses improve your property. Why? Because if they're more, if they're very... If they're, sorry, if they're better quality properties and they're valued a lot higher than what your properties are and you can get them up to that scratch by adding a bit of, you know, love, tenderizing care to those properties, you can achieve the same outcome as what those properties are valued at that particular time. So I think this strategy, as you can see, it's not rocket science. It's not this, you know, very hard, tedious, you don't have to muck around, you know, you don't, it's, not, it's not something that you have to put a lot of, I guess there's a lot of work involved doing going from the research side of things but it's very simple it's easy and the 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 beauty of this strategy is that it's a little to no risk if you target all three of these areas in your strategy Mm -hmm. little to no risks the properties won't affect your lifestyle they'll put money in your pocket from day one and they're scale scale will be scalable and it'll help you achieve your financial goals this is what allows you to get property after property now I'm not going to talk too much on the finance side of things because I think we should do another video on that. That that that's something that we can talk about for you know, I'll, probably for an hour or so. We can go on that about your personal situation, debt to income ratios. We can talk about how you get access to more credit and what will happen when the property is a different yielding point. So if they're returning a different percentage of yield, what that does for your personal situation. So we'll talk about that in another episode. Okay, but this is something like I said. of Australian investors don't own more than three investment properties. And this is because they do not use this strategy correctly for their own personal situation. For majority of Australian investors, you know, they need these this this strategy to work and help them build a property portfolio. And saying that, 
doesn't matter what what industry you are, what income you're making, or if you're a business owner or self, or if you're a PAYG, this strategy works for everyone. Wow. And it helps you, allows you to get access to more credit, build that extra income, moving forward. You've got multiple options to manufacture that income as well. So we'll talk about the, the finance strategy about that in another episode. So stay tuned, which will probably be coming out. Who knows when we'll be doing that? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna list the things that we want to help people to inspire them so they can not get stuck at one property. That's our goal. Like I said, Adrian and I, we want to make sure that we can help change that 0.4% of Australian investors that own three or more properties. Let's get it. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you like today's podcast, then you're absolutely going to love the Investing You Facebook group, where we share a bunch of valuable tips and tricks on property investing for our exclusive community. Come join us and let's level up.